This is the first in a series of uh, videos talking about answers. I'm going to start off looking at a hook. Here's one I made earlier. It's not a good hook. Uh, the aim of this exercise, of course, is to laser cut the hook out of 8mm thick steel. So let's extrude this. 8 millimeters. So we now have an 8 millimeter hook, 8 millimeter thick hook. Um, before we go any further, let's actually think about this because this hook is symmetrical in that plane. Let's just show the plane here, the XY plane. What's on the right of that line is the same as what's on the left. The stresses will be identical. Is there any reason for solving basically the same thing twice? The answer is not really. Can we find some way to solve just one half of the hook? And the answer is yes. If we put a frictionless constraint on this side of the hook and leave this side free, effectively we're treating uh, we're saying that there's a mirror plane on the side where we put the frictionless constraint. But that is effectively saying that the hook is 16 millimeters thick. So let's half it here, go into the extrusion, make it only 4 millimeters thick. That way, when we put uh, a symmetry plane on the frictionless constraint on this side, we're effectively doubling the thickness of the hook. So we have our hook, it's called a thin hook for obvious reasons. Save. Let's go to ANSYS. Use static structural. Not going to worry about material properties now. This is an elastic steel analysis, and we don't need to worry too much about yield point. But the geometry, hook then. So we have a four millimeter thick hook. And what we want to do is put a frictionless constraint here, frictionless support. That is basically creating, as far as the stress is concerned, a perfect mirror in that plane so that what's on the, the left is technically on the right. However, because we only have half a hook, we have to use only half the force. So if I wanted to apply 30 kilonewtons to the hook, what I actually have to do is apply 15. Because in the mirror world, there is another 15 being applied. So although we, uh, although we want 30 kilonewtons on an 8 millimeter hook, 15 kilonewtons on a 4 millimeter hook has the same effect. And the results here will be uh, effectively the, the center line of the hook, and the results here will be the exterior of the hook. Now we need to have a constraint up here, and the cylindrical constraint will work. Now really we should say that the tangential is free to allow it to rotate at the top. Uh, but we're having difficulties making that work at the moment. So I'm going to leave everything fixed, even though that means the stresses down this side of the hook are likely to be very wrong. The mesh, let's generate the mesh. See, that's quite a coarse mesh. I mean, it's quite horrible. 623 nodes, 69 elements. It's pretty awful. Let's go to the other extreme. Um, Sizing, element size, one millimeter, and generate. There we have a 
nice fairly uniform one millimeter density mesh the number of nodes is 164,000 which is still within the, the al what's allowed by the, the ANSYS license which lets us have I think 256,000 elements and 256,000 nodes but if you think about it that's half the hook has got 164,000 nodes which means in effect the 8 millimeter thick hook has got twice that many in other words 330,000 which is more than ANSYS would allow us so by cutting by using the symmetry we've effectively modeling half the hook and allow able to do it in much greater detail than we would otherwise be forced to do. Let's solve. Now we'll need to actually show what we're looking at. Solution insert stress equivalent one meters solve heat there we have a four millimeter thick hook with 15 kilonewtons bearing load vertically down unfortunately fixed at the top so it can't rotate the way it's want to and it's anyway the connection here is wrong it's being supported at the bottom of the hull rather than at the top so the stresses are all wrong here but it's a fairly precise analysis for all that and we're getting yield and possible failure down here according to Francis, but what that means in terms of a, a tensile test is anybody's guess. That's all I want to say about the hook. I just to reiterate, we've used a, a frictionless support here to say effectively that's uh, the line of symmetry, it's uh, the midpoint of the hook so that the stresses you see here and let's turn the elements off the stresses you see here are in the midpoint of the plane, the midplane of the hook rather and the stresses you see here are on the outside of the hook now there's not a lot of difference but there is occasionally some differences and especially once you start putting it into an assembly with multiple pieces and how they make contact with the outside of the hook not the inside of the hook then it can be quite significant how the hook varies well uh, thank you for listening if you've got this far I will be back with another video shortly